Hi guys, Daisy and I want to show you something that's been happening in our house this week. We have been learning about butterflies. And we actually have real butterflies hatching here. I don't know if you've ever done a study on butterflies, but it's pretty neat. It starts out with this tiny little egg and then grows into a fuzzy caterpillar that eats all day. And then all of a sudden, one day you check them and they've turned into these crunchy little hard shelled things called chrysalises. And you kind of think at first, maybe my caterpillar died. We have a real chrysalis right here. I want to show you it up close because it's hard and crusty and it's not pretty at all. And you kind of start to lose hope. And then all of a sudden, one day you check it again and this chrysalis has transformed into a beautiful butterfly. And that's what happened in our habitat just yesterday. We had eight chrysalises hanging out down here and within a few hours, they had all hatched into beautiful little butterflies. In another day, we're gonna release these in our backyard and watch them fly away in all their beauty. But the reason I'm sharing this with you today is because it totally reminds me of the verse in the Bible from 2 Corinthians that says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And that just makes me think about how our old hearts are crusted with sin and there's nothing beautiful or good that can be seen. But when we put our hope in Jesus and we ask him to forgive us of our sins, he takes something kind of crusty and hard and ugly and he forgives us and makes something beautiful that he can use for his glory and for his good. And so that just makes me praise God. It makes me thankful for the hope we have in Jesus, the hope we have that he'll forgive our sins and he'll take our sinful hearts and give us hearts that believe and trust in him. So we just wanted to share that with you. Here's one more look at our butterflies. Sometimes they open their wings and they're the, the outside of their wings are really pretty. But we love you guys and we miss you and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Hi guys, um, Jenny here. I'm talking to you about uh, the six to nine year old um, about our lessons this week. So we're gonna go over lessons um, 10 and 11. I'm gonna just talk to you a little bit about uh, lesson 11 to try to keep this brief. But first I just wanna say, I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're enjoying this nice sunshine we're having. I know I am. Um, and I just, uh, again, we miss you guys. Um, we hope you're getting back to church. Um, I'm looking forward to going this Sunday. We've been, uh, we didn't go last week, but uh, we are excited to be back in the sanctuary this week. Um, I'm sad that we can't meet as children's ministry quite yet. Um, we are working on plans for that, but I don't know when that will happen. And so anyway, in the interim, this is what we're going to still do. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. So um, also, I know I said something about a big party when we all come back to church, which obvi obviously hasn't happened. Um, and I'm not sure what that's going to be. We may be doing something in the fall. Um, I think that that's something that we would like to still do um, just with all the, um, you know, coronavirus uh, restrictions that we have. Um, we're not able to right now, but that doesn't mean we're not going to do it. And I am um, looking forward to planning that and doing it at some point in our future. So if you guys um, have your papers, um, I sent out to you yesterday. Uh, you can pull them out for the lessons um, 10 and 11. And um, this is with the promises curriculum. So um, I have some things I'm just going to kind of use here. Uh, to illustrate um, to illust illustrate what uh, what we're talking about. So um, we're talking about um, good works and good works are things that we do that um, glorify God and that are evidence of our relationship with him. And um, they are done by God's people. And they are done 
with the heart of God, so with God's best interest, what he would have us do in mind. And then um, why, the reason why is for God's glory. So, um, so in this, in this, this little lesson that we have here in lesson 11, um, we're, we're talking about the fact that uh, if you are, if you belong to God, you will bear fruit. So one of the, um, the verse, the verses that we're talking about today is John 15, 5. And this says, you will bear fruit. So uh, this is a promise. This is one of God's promises to us. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So we can't do anything good without God. We can't do anything good without God. Do you guys understand that? So even when you've done a really awesome chore for your mom or dad or your neighbor or grandma or grandpa, you couldn't have done that without God's help. Um, God gives us the ability to do the things we do. And when we do those, um, we glorify him. Um, when we sin, when we do things that are not good, we don't glorify him. We do the opposite. So, um, it, when you guys are, are, um, thinking about this and when you're going through your lessons and both lessons today are really good and they kind of go together, um, it's just a great reminder of, uh, the fact that every day that we have, um, we have a choice. We can glorify God in what we do, or we can do the opposite, which is not glorify God and maybe even hurt his reputation. Um, I want to encourage you guys, you know, every day to wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to glorify God in what I do today. And I know that um, he will bless you in that. And even in a hard day, he will bless you in that. And um, we we just, we serve a, an awesome God. We serve uh, the creator of the universe. We serve a savior who died for us, even though he didn't need to. He didn't need to do that, but he did it because he loves us. And so what we do, we need to do for his glory. And we, um, and he gives us the ability to do that. So as we are going through this weird time, I just want you guys to lean into God. I want you to get to know him better. I want you to use these papers that we're sending you just to know him better, to serve him better, to share him with others, and to love him more. And we look forward to seeing you. I hope we see you in church, um, even if we have to be in the sanctuary all the time instead of going to our classes. Um, and be sure to, you know, even though it's different, be sure to come. It's important for the body of Christ to be together. And we love you guys and are praying for you. And you know what? I'm going to just end with a prayer right now. Oh, Jesus, um, I just thank you. Um, I thank you for whoever it is who's watching this right now. I pray that you bless them, God. I pray that everything that we do would be for your glory and that you would be glorified in it. God, I pray that we would turn away from things do, that do not glorify you. And I pray that we would not be selfish, Lord, that we would be thinking of others. I pray that we would be kind to our, our neighbors and our siblings and our parents. I pray that we would obey. And I pray, God, that you would just be with us in everything we do. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Hey, kiddos. Hey, we're here uh, week whatever. Uh, we have questions seven and eight. I was watching a... Uh, Old Spice commercial, and the guy was boom, 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 boom. Anyways, um, just a little fun right there. But hey, let's dive right in um, to what we got going. Uh, question seven, um, and it asks, "Is what does the law of God require? What does God require?" And we've covered this. Um, here's what the answer is. Or let's go to the verse. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven through forty says, "And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord.'" your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law 
and the profit. Um, so the answer is, A, we said it, personal, perfect, perpetual obedience. Okay, not some of the time, not part of the time, all the time. Okay, that we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. What God forbids should never be done, and what God commands should always be done. Okay, um, the commentary comes from uh, John Wesley. Uh, so, you know, what does God, the law of God, require? Everything. Okay, personal, perfect, perpetual obedience not just some of the time all the time not just because you say it because you mean it um uh so the breakdown um john wesley says loving the the lord god with all your heart mind and soul and strength is the first branch of christian righteousness you shall delight yourself in the lord your god seeking and finding all happiness to in him you shall hear and fulfill his word, my son, give me your heart. And having given him your innermost, in you know, inmost soul to reign, there without a rival, you may well cry out in the fullness of your heart, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my strong rock, my Savior, my God, in whom I trust. The second commandment, the second great branch of of Christian righteousness is closely and inseparably connected with the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, embrace with the most tender goodwill, the most earnest and cordial, cordial, cordial affection, the most inflamed desires of preventing or removing all evil and bringing every possible good. Your neighbor, not only your friends, your kinfolk or acquaintances, not only those who regard you, who extend or return your kindness, but every person, every person, okay? not excluding those who have never seen or known by name, not excluding those who known who know to be evil or unthankful, those who dis despitefully use you, even those you shall love as yourself with the same invariable thirst after their happiness use the same unwearied care to screen them from whatever might grieve or hurt either their soul or body this is love love you know love is the greatest commandment you know love yourself love your god um, love your neighbor you know uh, going through a time right now where hey guess what we need to love our neighbors doesn't matter who it is or what it is or but we need to spread that, um, spread God's word, and spread it in love, not in, uh, not in hate, not in put downs, not in oh I see you're doing this. It's all done in love. So um, we're gonna jump to question eight now, and it goes in question eight. So you know what's the law of God? Well, seven. Uh, what is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? Ten Commandments, okay? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol okay, in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Okay? Idol, something you put in front of God instead of. Okay? This could be a lot of different things. This is you know, you come down, it could be money, it could be the TV, it could be your games, it could be friends, you know, or you put in the, God comes first. Okay? Uh, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord, your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You sh shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. Um, so the, the commentary um, comes from John Yates, okay? So the Ten Commandments, um, because God created and loved us and, and knows what is best for us, he gives us moral and spiritual direction, okay? That's what the Ten Commandments, okay? Direction on how to live life in the best way. The Ten Commandments are a love gift to us from God. Of course, this is true to, of all scripture, 
but the heart and the soul of God's guidance is found in the Ten Commandments. God spoke the words of Moses, and, and they were overheard by the children of Israel. Later, Moses related the Ten Commandments, and the Ten Commandments are to be memorized, pondered, and committed as a way to life. Jesus taught and clarified the deeper meaning of the Ten Commandments for us. As he explained the Ten Commandments in the Gospel, he raised the bar on our understanding of what God expects, raising it, what he expects from us. For instance, Jesus explained the meaning of the commandment not to murder. He said that actually anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject, subject to judgment. Okay. Um, the first four commandments okay, deal with our relationship with God, our relationship with God. Um, and Jesus summarized, summarized them, you shall love the, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Okay? If you can do that, man, you're on track. Okay? <clears throat> um, the last six commandments address our relationship with fellow man. And Jesus summarized this, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? That goes right back to question seven. Those two things, love your love your God with all your mind and body and soul, um, and then, or excuse me, all your heart. And then uh, the second part is love your neighbor. Uh, commandments are, are, are our treasures. We cherish them, okay? They're a great gift, a love gift from God. They guide us. They warm us. They protect us. They keep us. Um, when we keep them, we show others what God is like. When we fail to live them, we bring great harm to ourselves and dishonor our maker. Okay. We have a we have a problem keeping the Ten Commandments because man is born in bondage to sin. Okay. We we all came through sin, okay, and selfishness. And in the end, we cannot help but break God's holy law. But when we become a new creature by faith in Christ, when okay, we make that decision, okay, we're cleaned. Okay, we're just cleaned. Okay. Washed, made new. Okay. Uh, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We're freed from from having to sin. We're given the grace to keep God's law. Keeping God's commandments is not our nervousness, but helps us live at peace with God, with ourselves and with our neighbors. Uh, we can we can learn to live out the Ten Commandments as we realize that, that, that there's God's gifts to us, like learning the truth, like learning to tell the truth. Okay? When we're young, we sometimes feel Oh man, I tell a lie, I tell a lie, and now it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, but then you you know get part of to deceiving people, and we don't want that. Okay, we want you know you're deceiving, you're not telling the truth. You learn that time goes on, not to deceive. Okay, not to lie, not to get caught in those snowballs. Okay, it's not getting caught, it's just not doing it. Okay, uh, we learn to speak the truth. We learn to practice honesty. So truth and honesty. Uh, that's why the prophet loved God. God's law, and why we should too. Keeping the Ten Commandments protect us. It protects society. These principles are the, at the heart of how God created us. So question eight, um, what is the law of God, or what is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? Okay. Love yourself. Okay. The first four is about our relationship. Okay. The second six is about our relationship around us. Okay, uh, back to seven. What does God require? Um, personal, perfect, perpetual obedience. Okay, with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay, and love our neighbor as ourselves. If we can do that, guys, uh, we're on track. So that's number seven, number eight this week. Uh, look forward to coming and, and being with you guys and getting our classes going and, and stuff. And so uh, uh, please, you know, please read through. You can go to newcitycatechism.com. And they have the questions on there and some good, good more, more info and uh, being able to, uh, to just go a little deeper into it. Okay. Well, hey, uh, we will see you on Sunday, we hope. If not, peace out, home fries, and uh, have a good day. All right. Bye.